Okay, folks, we have a turn, and let's start the next case. This is case 22 in the conspiracy. Out of 60, of course. Eight more weeks, and we'll be at the halfway point. Caller being murdered. Matthew, we're already up to our elbows in ancient underground cities and bizarre cults. Who knows what's coming next? Speaking of which, I hope Gabriel's alright. He managed to infiltrate the higher truth, giving us a chance to finally learn more about them. Cults are highly unpredictable at the best of times, so our profiler's undercover skills had better be up to the task. Otherwise, he might end up in a world of trouble. Or worse, dead. Like the body has just been found on Church Street. Wait, I know that street. It got hit pretty bad by the earthquake and there's still lava running through it. Now there's a dead body too? Come on Matthew, we better get to Church Street on the double. And let's find out. I don't think it is Gabriel. Everybody can now feel much safer than the day I took office, he tweeted. But Kim Jong Un was there for years. And the joint statement he signed in Singapore didn't indicate that the didn't say that would be verifiable. Well, let's find out. It's difficult for me to see if something was actually agreed to or not. Arriving for talks in South Korea today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said he expects a major disarmament from the North within the next two and a half years. He said he was on the joint statement, calling their questions insane or ridiculous, and quite frankly, it's his backpack. That is certainly not Gabriel. Thank goodness. dialogue and negotiation. Not exactly what President Trump said in his news conference. The sanctions will come off when we are sure that Careful where you step, Matthew. There's lava everywhere. I was thinking this guy was lucky not to have fallen into it, but it looks like he didn't fare much better. His chest has been, been slashed open. Oh, but we know this dude. Oh, but we know this dude. It's that comic book artist we met while investigating the murder of Karen Boulder. Marcus has started building up quite a fan base recently because of his Zerda inspired Miracle Girl character. I guess he won't be drawing anymore. But back to the body. Those slash marks look like bear claws, except I've never seen a bear wipe his bloody hands with a handkerchief. Matt, we've got a killer on the loose. I agree, a first part of cost be getting a sample of the blood on the hanky. He also found the victim's backpack. We should definitely take a look inside. Matthew the bad guy never gets away in a comic. We've got to make sure our killer doesn't either. Eighteen hours, and I need to get some stars. But as a matter of fact, I am going. I know I'm going to wind up at fifteen after this. Or I'd wind up at 15 after this if I went through all the way, but I'm going to go ahead and see if I can indeed get this all, get this all sorted out. A travel mug. Matthew, what's so interesting about the travel mug you found on the victim's backpack? Ah, I see. It's got a picture of the victim on it. But who's the grinning dude next to him? They seem pretty close, I agree. Let's see if we can figure out the man's identity in our archives. 
We'll get the mystery man after I get some stars. Okay, I got eight stars, so let's get the mystery man out of the way. Haruki Kato. Magic the mysterious, the mystery guy with the victim on the mug is one Haruki Kato. We better inform Mr. Kato of Marcus's death, and hopefully he'll be able to provide us with the lead to help us catch the murderer. I wonder who'd win a, in a fight between an intergalactic sugar worm and a Martian sandball. Ahem, <clears throat> Mr. Kato? Oh, hello. Where did you guys teleport from? Um, we came from the police station. Mr. Kato, I'm afraid we have some sad news. Marcus Butler has been murdered. We believe you knew him? Marcus? Marcus is dead? This can't be! Marcus and I have been the ultimate geek boy duo since high school. Who am I going to discuss time travel paradoxes with now? Oh, I'm just going to have to eat away my sorrows. I better go buy some more strawberry candy. I'm truly sorry for your loss, Mr. Kato, but did you notice anything strange about Marcus recently? Nothing that I can think of. Marcus pretty much spent all his time holed up in his studio drawing comics as, in his studio drawing comics as always. You say Marcus had a studio? Matthew, we better check it out. It's my work that you Let's see if I can get a first star here. Awesome drawings in the studio. Our victim was seriously talented. But back to business. I agree, this fancy box that's out of place. Let's get it open and see what's hidden inside. And putting these torn pieces of paper back together should be child's play for you, Matthew. I'm gonna get some more stars, so sit tight, everyone. Okay. Let's 
start with the torn stuff first. I have all the stars now, so it's for a total of 22 up until now. Wow, Matthew, this letter to the victim is pretty gushing. Listen to this. Marcus, you transformed my whole existence. Miracle Girl is the most awesome superhero ever. I love her even more than my guitar. The letter signed Olive Powell. Why does that name ring a bell? Wait a second. Isn't Olive the name of Judge Powell's daughter? Matthew, it looks like Olive's pretty obsessed with the victim and his comic book creation, Miracle Girl. We better have a chat with her. If you're here to see my mom's senior trooper, Matthew, she's not here. Actually, Olive, we're here to talk to you. Marcus, the comic book artist, has been murdered. What? Marcus is dead? Seriously, why is my life one continuous tragedy? Hmm, I think maybe Marcus has had a more tragic day, seeing he's been murdered and all. Marcus? Forget him. All I care about is Miracle Girl. Now he's, but now he's dead. Who's gonna write more comics about the coolest superhero that ever lived? Oh, why does my life suck so bad? Pretty sure she's not the killer. Bloody handkerchief now. Here we are. Let's get this blood sample you lifted from the handkerchief straight to the lab, Matthew. Okay. And now the locked box. Okay. Four, four, one, four, four. One, seven, one, four, one. One, four, three. Everybody has sunglasses. But most sunglasses just... Ooh, that's a nice watch. Well, Matthew, that is one expensive watch Marcus has got there. Its inscription indicates it was a gift from his father. How lucky. The most I ever get from my dad is a six-pack of beers on my birthday. I'm sorry, Matthew, you're right. We better find the poor man and give him the news of his son's passing. Look, poor man. Senior Chipper Matthew, I know why you're here. I've already been informed about my son. Mr. Butler, we promise to do everything in our power to bring Marcus's killer to justice. Now I know this is a hard time, but is there anything you can tell us about your son that might help us in our investigation? I'm afraid not. Marcus never got into trouble. He was just the sweetest and most talented boy you could imagine. My darling son had waited so long to receive the creative recognition he'd always hoped for. How tragic that he had to die just after people finally began to appreciate his work. Oh, Senior Chipper Matthew, what am I going to do without my boy? And I'll see you guys on both Okay, we have returned, and we'll get the results of the autopsy right now. 
Now you'll be glad to hear that I know exactly what weapon your killer used to murder the victim and where the gun is. Great, Martine. Tell us everything you know. First off, it was immediately obvious that your killer used some kind of multi pronged device to claw at your victim's chest. And I found particles of a metal alloy in the wounds. An alloy which provides, which proves the killer used a toy replica of a white bear claw, which they sharpened into a weapon deadly enough to fatally wound the victim. White bear? Isn't that the superhero who attacks his enemies using retractable claws? The very same one, Jones. And this particular claw model has only been on sale once at the last GrimCon, Grimsboro's annual comic book festival. This tells us that your killer visited the last GrimCon. Well, the killer's festivaling days will soon be over if Matthew's got anything to do with it. Okay, now the blood. Matthew, your latest victim got me reminiscing about my favorite childhood comic. It was about Rollo and Ginger, the Queen's naughtiest Corgus. You used to read comic books, groups? When was that? The 1800s? Um, guys, before you go off on a tangent, do you have anything to tell us about the blood sample from the handkerchief? Well, first off, the blood belongs to your victim, which means your killer did indeed use the handkerchief to wipe the blood off himself. Also mixed in with the blood were traces of peppermint, liqueur, vodka, and coconut water, the main ingredients of the delicious, incredible bulk cocktail. Martine confirmed that the, that the victim did not have this cocktail in his system, which means it's your killer who enjoys this superhero themed beverage. Matthew, our killer definitely won't be feeling like a superhero when we throw them in a jail cell. Alright. Matthew, it's not every day that we find someone with their insides slashed to pieces by a sharpened toy claw. Marcus Baller was an up and coming comic book artist and seemed to be loved by family, friends, and fans alike. So why does someone murder him? We met the victim's best friend, who seems devastated to have lost his geeky counterpart and his father, who is, who is as upset about losing his son as you'd expect. Then there's the judge's daughter, who's crazy about Miracle Girl, the victim's most famous creation. Did you just say Miracle Girl, Matthew? Because she's here to see you. We'll see, and we'll find that out in chapter two. Excuse me, folks. Welcome back. It's now time for chapter two of Color Me Murder. Miracle Girl is here. She wants to talk to you. Miracle Girl? But that's a fictional superhero made up by our victim. She doesn't exist in real life. Yeah, well, real or not, she's waiting for you in the interrogation room. For continuing coverage from the big hour, stay with Island News on air, online, through our mobile app, or across social media. A woman wandering on the airport was hit and killed by a car early this morning. Hail, human. I am Miracle Girl. Er, say what? I was forged from the sacred magma of the ancients, and I hereby swear on the mighty glory of Zerda to avenge the heinous slaying of my cherished man comrade. Man comrade? Yes, you know him by the name of Marcus. And how do you know Marcus? Marcus and I spent many an evening in the Tavern of the Kraken. 
contemplating how to save the universe from mortal peril. I must admit, I also enjoy relaxing with a glass of the establishment's most flavorsome and credible bulk beverage after a day of fighting crime. Okay, well thank you for coming in, Miss... Er... Miracle Girl. But please leave all the avenging murder business to us, won't you? What the heck was that Miracle Girl woman on about, Matthew? You're right. That Kraken Tavern she mentioned. We better take a look around it. Flash comic book and the torn coupon. Matthew, this is the Miracle Girl comic book, and it's just been, just been slashed, just like our victim's stomach. I'll bet Marcus is killer prep just their murderous slashes on this book using their white bear claw. In which case, we need to get a sample of that stain on it. And yes, it looks like the victim won this coupon after coming first in a quiz. Let's work out the name of the person who issued it to him. So Matthew, a T1 Jiku gave this coupon to the victim. They must work here. Her speech of this T1 Jiku, or this Tamu 1 Jiku. Let's see what she has to say. Welcome to the Kraken. Can I tempt you with the incredible bulk? One of my favorite cocktails? I use coconut water from my motherland of Mazunda to make it extra delicious. So you're the bartender here, Miss Wanjiku. We'd like to ask you about one of your customers, a comic book artist called Marcus. Ah yes, Marcus, one of our regulars. I've known he was destined to be famous the moment I saw his work displayed in his tiny stall at the last GrimCon. Well, Miss Wanjiku, I'm sorry to tell you that Marcus was found murdered earlier today. Murdered? How unfortunate. Do you know if Marcus had any enemies? Hmm. Marcus seems like seems a good humored lad who was liked by all. The worst I saw the boy do was get drunk and break one of my chairs, but I made sure he learned never to do that again. Slash comic book now. Matthew, let's hope Blooper can 
discover something about the killer from the blue substance they left on the defaced comic book. That's 12 hours, and I'll see you guys when this is done. Okay, we have returned. Let's get the results of the blue substance. Matthew, the latest sample you sent through should stand as a reminder to all of us to spend enough time outdoors. Why do you say that, Rupert? Well, I tested that the blue substance Matthew extracted from the comic book that the killer defaced, and it turned out to be colocalciferol supplements. Colocalci- what? Oh, sorry. You may know colocalciferol better, know better as vitamin D, which is needed to keep your muscles and bones healthy. The best source of it is the sun. However, it looks like your killer isn't getting enough sunshine, which is why they're in need of an artificial vitamin D boost. Well, the sun certainly won't be shining in the maximum security penitentiary we'll be throwing the killer in, will it, Matthew? But for now, what do you say we pay the victim's studio another visit? frame box phone This has got to be the victim's phone. <clears throat> we found it in his studio after all. Let's unlock it. And we better put this broken picture frame back together just in case. adoption for the victim. So William Butler adopted our victim when he was a child. I wonder if this affected their relationship in any way. Let's talk. Let's ask him. Oh, hello again, Senior Trooper Matthew. I was about to pop out to buy more vitamin D pills, 
All the stress from my son's death is making my bones ache. Mr. Butler, we know Marcus wasn't your biological son. Why didn't you tell us? Because it made no difference whether he was my adopted or biological son. At least not to me. But I wish Marcus had seen it that way. Are you saying Marcus didn't consider you his real dad? Apparently not. You see, I recently found out Marcus was trying to find his biological father. He said he needed to know where he came from. I didn't understand why he'd want to bother looking for him when he had a perfectly good father already. Me! How could my son do that to me after everything I sacrificed for him? Why wasn't I enough for him? Mr. Butler, you seem to be harboring a lot of rage. Let's hope it didn't lead you to harm your son. Right. This is the victim's phone. If there are any leads lurking in it, Kathy will be sure to weed them out. See you guys when this is finished. See y'all then. And welcome back, folks. Let's get the results of the victim's phone right now. Well, Matthew, it seems your victim had enemies as well as fans. I found a bunch of texts on his phone sent from an anonymous number saying things like, Marcus, you suck, and you're more scuzzy than the gum stuck to the bottom of my shoe. Alright, this could be a lead. Did you manage to track that anonymous number down? Well, it took a while, but I was finally able to break the number blocking software that the sender used. And it turns out these messages came from Olive Powell. Whoa! Are you saying the judge's daughter sent these texts? Yeah. I tell you, I'm not looking forward to the day my family becomes a teenager. Matthew, these insulting messages are a far cry from the gushing fan letter Olive sent to the victim. We better ask her what led her to it what led to her change of heart. Ugh, what do you want now, Senior Trooper Matthew? I'm busy. Olive, we'd like you to explain why you sent nasty messages to Marcus. What? I never did that. Why do I always get blamed for everything? Olive, we have special software that confirmed the text came from your phone. Alright, fine. I did send the messages to Marcus, but he deserved them, and more. Why? We thought you loved him and his work. I found out Marcus was going to kill off Miracle Girl. Senior Trooper Matthew, I've been going to GrimCon for years, and Miracle Girl was the only superhero that ever spoke to my soul. I couldn't imagine my life without her. That's why I got mega angry and wrote Marcus those texts, and I regret nothing. Well, Olive, you'll regret a hell of a lot more if we... You'll regret a hell of a lot if we find out you did more than just send irate messages to Marcus. Matthew, this case is becoming stranger than fiction by the minute. 
Our list of suspects in the murder of Marcus Butler now includes an irate teenager, a disgruntled father, and a wannabe superhero who identifies with Miracle Girl so much that she thinks she actually is the victim's comic book creation. <coughs> Senior Trooper Matthew. Judge Powell. Mom, I told you. Quiet, Olive. Senior Trooper Matthew, I must speak with you right away. We'll find out what Judge Powell wants with her daughter to speak with us with about that after this. Alright folks, this is Matthew and we have returned for Chapter 3 of Color Me Murdered. <clears throat> and we just found out that Judge Powell has brought her daughter in to tell. Senior Trooper Matthew, please tell me it isn't true. Judge Powell? Mom, I told you. Quiet, Olive. Senior Trooper Matthew, is my daughter really a suspect in your latest murder investigation? Did you find insulting messages sent from her to your victim? I'm afraid so, Judge, but... Oh, boy. Olive Wilhelmina Powell, I did not raise you to behave so abhorrently, and don't think I don't know about those incredible bulk cocktails you drank the other day. Mom, I can exp- Senior Tripper Matthew, I authorize you to do whatever is necessary to get to the bottom of Olive's involvement in your investigation. Let's go, Olive. Oof. Matthew, remind me never to get on the wrong side of Judge Powell. And to avoid that, we better find Marcus's killer, and fast. Let's make another sweep of the Kraken. That's another black mark against Olive. My gut says no, she's not the killer. But I guess anything's possible. T-shirt. There we go, broken statue. Matthew, that T-shirt says Boycott Miracle Girl, the movie on it. I didn't even know they were making a film of the superhero. More importantly, this incendiary t-shirt could be a slight against our victim. Let's see if those pink particles can tell us who owns it. And based on those photos, this faded newspaper article is also about Marcus and Miracle Girl. We should recover the text to find out more. We also better put that broken statue back together. Quickly, Matthew, our time is running out to catch our supervillain. Okay, I got a few stars. Take the t-shirt first. Bye. 
Let's examine these pink particles you picked up from the t-shirt in more detail, Matthew. Strawberry candy. Matthew, these pink particles on the t-shirt are all the ingredients you find in strawberry candy. You're right, Matthew. You're right, Matthew. Haruki Kato mentioned going to buy a strawberry confection when we spoke to him. Does that mean Haruki's the one inciting people to boycott Miracle Girl, the movie? Let's ask him. Haruki, we thought Marcus was your best friend. Why would you want people to boycott a film about his most famous superhero creation? Because Marcus totally sold out with this dumb blockbuster piece of junk. A few days ago, some Hollywood director came to Marcus offering him big bucks to sign the rights to Miracle Girl, the movie. But part of the deal was that they could change the story however they wanted, and Marcus agreed. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Didn't Marcus remember how people were laughing at the last GrimCon about what they did in Transmutators 9? Didn't he have any creative integrity or pride in him at all? Marcus was an embarrassment to artists everywhere. Now please excuse me, Senior Trooper Matthew. I need to get an incredible bulk down me before I fall completely into a black hole of despair. statue. Fish. This is the sculpture of a fish, and it's got the victim's name scrawled across it. Normally I suggest we send the fish to Gabriel, but he's busy pretending to be a child of, of the higher truth. Let's hope Ramirez can help instead. Nine hours. And let's get the faded newspaper out of the way. Comic book creator mocks real life miracle girl. She's no superhero. Matthew, the headline of this article is Comic book creator mocks real life miracle girl. It then quotes our victim saying things like, She's no superhero, and how dare she desecrate the sanctity of my vision. It's clear the victim wasn't a fan of the miracle girl we met, but she led us to believe they were comrades. We better go get the truth from her. Humans, I knew you would return in search of my superlative ex superlative ex assistance. Actually, we're here for the truth, Miracle Girl. We know what Marcus really thought of you. Surely you can't have been happy about it. Oh, Senior Trooper Matthew, Marcus was just awful. I was so excited to show him my transformation, 
but he just laughed in my face and said I could never be Miracle Girl because I was too skinny and my hair wasn't thick enough. I did everything I could to prove him wrong. I even started taking vitamin D supplements to get stronger, but it wasn't enough for him. I helped promote Marcus when he was just a nobody at the last GrimCon, but even this counted for nothing when he got famous. Well, Marcus's behavior to you was deplorable, but I'm afraid it won't count as a defense if we find out you murdered him. That's going to do for this. See you guys later. Okay. Finally, Ben Kim is working. Tried earlier, but it just went unresponsive. Now let's get the results of the fish statue from Ramirez. Matthew, you're lucky I like fishing. That's why I instantly recognized what you sent in as a sculpture of a catfish. But I had no idea why someone would write a person's name on a catfish. So I decided to see if there were any traditions associated with this particular aquatic species. And it turns out that in Mazunda, people believe you can curse someone by writing their name on a catfish sculpture and then breaking it. So what you're saying is that someone was trying to put a Mazundan curse on our victim? Wait a second, Matthew. Didn't that Kraken bartender tell us she was from Mazunda? Tamu Wanjiku also, also told us the victim broke one of her chairs when he was drunk. But surely she wouldn't have wanted to curse him just for that. Matthew, we need to find out exactly what Miss Wanjiku's been playing at. Miss Wanjiku, why did you try to put a curse on Marcus? How did you find out about that? We make it our business to find out everything. Now explain. Alright, look, the thing is, Marcus had a crush on me. At first it was rather amusing. He'd get doe-eyed and tongue-tied around me a bit like a forlorn little puppy. But then the boy got all cocky on his newfound fame and tried to grope me. He's lucky a curse is all I gave him. Just talking about it again is making me peekish. You haven't seen that little Haruki fellow, have you? I need a hit of his vitamin D tablets. Please don't try and change the subject, Miss Wanjiku. Unless so for your sake that we don't find out you cursed Marcus to death. Right, Matthew, let's take a quick break and recap what we've learned so far in the murder of Marcus Butler. Marcus was mauled to death with a sharpened toy claw, but why and by whom? We now know that fame seems to have gone to the victim's head, leading him to mock Miracle Girl to her face and to the press, and to make unwanted advances on Tamu Wanjiku. Wanjiku. Then we've got the victim's adoptive dad, who was upset that his son was intent on finding his biological father, and a best friend who was furious he'd sacrificed his creative integrity for cash. All we need are a couple more clues to decide which one of our suspects is the true culprit. I agree. You better take another look at the scene of the crime, just in case you missed something the first time the first time around. Let's go, Matthew. Let's find those clues. 
It's great to know we don't have to do all the heavy lifting alone. Trash can. White bear claw. Giraffe tie. And cringe apples. How about that? Two seconds. Of course, I did get a lucky find with 100,000 extra points after getting all five stars on the last crime scene. Matthew, you found a bloody claw. This has got to be the murder weapon. We need to get a sample of that pale stain on the claw strap as quick as we can. And I agree, if the killer was dumb enough to dispose of their murder weapon here, then they may also have tried to discard more evidence in that trash can. It's time to get our hands dirty. Matthew, we're so close to nabbing our killer. I just know it. It's a problem playing out in neighborhoods all over the island. Neighbors upset over illegal rentals. Not only Manoa residents, but people in our community feel so violated. Daniel Gilmore, who lives next door, calls it a monster home because of its size and the amount of people living there. There are between 12 and 20 people living there, including a person that's offered a car dealership. Gilmore says she's got to have one Craigslist renting out six different sections of the house, totaling $10,000 a month. She's also seen ads for used cars. Seven. Let's get the surface you got off the killer's deadly claw straight to the lab, Matthew. The renters say they're not doing anything wrong. Their children, they're hardworking people. I'm not a single hardworking person. There's two single mothers up there with children. They're not lunatics. They are not outlaws. They are not breaking. Nine hours. Jenna Richie's been living in the house for six months. She says due to the housing shortage and skyrocketing costs, people living there don't have many other options. The Department of Planning and Permitting says there are two open investigations for illegal rentals at the house and a possible unpermitted business. It can't come in further because the investigation is ongoing. In an effort to crack down on monster homes, the city has a Hey, Grimcon bracelet with some blood on it. Matthew, there was a blood-stained visitor wristband for last year's Grimcon festival in the trash can. Our victim wouldn't have needed a visitor's pass for Grimcon since he was one of the exhibitors. Which means this wristband has to belong to our killer. Let's get it straight to the lab rats. These complaints, I mean, people feel like nothing is getting done. Scarborough, I'm 15 hours, and I'll see you guys when these two are finished. See y'all then. Okay, folks, we have returned. Let's get the results of the Grimcon visitor wristband. Amir, our time is running out to find out who killed Marcus Butler. Can the Grimcon wristband Matthew sent you help us catch them? I hope so. Upon examining the wristband, I notice a minuscule shred of cotton caught on the button. The killer must have snagged it on an item of clothing. Now, although it was a teeny tiny scrap, I have a snazzy machine that was able to reconstruct the pattern on the material. It revealed that your killer is wearing a star print fabric. Well, Matthew, our killer won't be feeling like much of a star when you've got them in handcuffs. Matthew, your killer must have been a tad nervous when they committed their dastardly deed. What makes you say that, Rupert? Because the liquid you took from their claw was sweat. The DNA didn't match the victims, which means this sweat must have come from your perspiring perpetrator. And what's more, the DNA indicated that your killer has brown eyes. 
Well, Brown or not, all eyes will be on a sweaty killer when they're awaiting their sentence in the courtroom. Matthew, we have all the evidence we need to arrest Marcus Butler's killer. Let's go get him. Boy, did your father and I have fun trying for you. Oh, I don't think I want to hear this. I was going to tell you to the 60, but I think you can handle that. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's Haruki Kato. Did it. Haruki Kato, you're under arrest for the murder of Marcus Butler. Me? Kill my best friend? What parallel universe are you living in, Senior Super Mountain? We are living in a world where we found traces of your favorite incredible bulk cocktail on the handkerchief you used to wipe yourself after killing Marcus. You've got it all wrong, Senior Super Matthew. My hands are clean. What a nice star print t-shirt you've got there. Did you notice you ripped it while pulling your blood Grimcon wristband, bloody Grimcon wristband off? Oh, come on. Star patterns are geek chic. Everyone's wearing them these days. Starting to sweat, Haruki? Funny, you also have sweat all over the sharp and white bear claw you used to slash Marcus to death. You know, there's one thing I don't understand. The street was filled with lava, so why didn't you just dump the body and your murder weapon into it? I hadn't thought of it. Alright, I did it. I killed Marcus. I had to, for the higher truth. You're a member of the higher truth? So that cult's now encouraging people to commit murder? Is there nothing... Of course not. The higher truth is as pure as the virgin sh as the virgin snow on a secluded mountain ledge. But fortunately, even the spiritually superior have material needs to fulfill while still in prison on this godforsaken planet. Which is why I was required to donate a hefty sum of money to advance to the next level and truly bask in the light of the one and only truth. Ah yes, we've heard how much the cult loves money. Marcus had raked in the dollars after selling the film's rights to Miracle Girl, so I asked him to help me, but he held on to his cash tighter than a leprechaun to his pot of gold. I realized the only way I was going to get a hold of that money was by killing him, so I prepared my attack, beginning by sharpening my white bear claw. I knew Marcus used to go to Church Street for creative inspiration, so I grabbed the claw, followed him there, and slashed his stomach to shreds. As soon as he took his last mortal breath, I grabbed his keys from his pockets, from his pocket, ran to the studio, and took all the cash I could get my hands on. Was it really that easy to slash your best friend to death? Senior Chipper Matthew, there is something of far more importance at play than the trivial notion of a best friend, and Marcus should have understood this. He should have understood that I was doing it for the greatest purpose of all, the higher truth. Well, Mr. Kato, your only purpose now will be to defend yourself in the courtroom. You're under arrest. Haruki Kato, I hear you killed your best friend for money. I did it to bask in the light of the higher truth. Mr. Kato, I have enough on my I have enough on my plate to deal with at home without having to put up with your culture-inspired crap trap. Now you have the right to worship whatever you want, but you never have the right to kill another human being. And for that reason, the court sentences you to 19 years in prison for the murder of Marcus Butler. Imprison my moral body if you wish. As long as I have the enlightened ones in my heart, my soul will be free. Matthew, well done putting Marcus Butler's murderer behind bars. It seems these so-called children of the higher truth are becoming so indoctrinated. 
They're now resorting to murder simply to reach the next level in the cult. It really makes you worry about Gabriel, doesn't it? He's thrown himself right into the snake pit by pretending to be a, de a devout follower of the Enlightened One. I really hope to receive word from him soon. And we will find out if we will get word from Gabriel in the additional investigation. Let's take a look at the other ones first. Olive Powell was cleared after clue three. William Butler cleared from the start. Yeah, the Yates there. You can have the William Butler Yates. Miracle Girl, blue eyes, not brown. Tamu Wanjiku. No star print. It was Haruki Kato. I'll see you guys for the moment of truth for six. Okay, folks, let's start the moment of truth for six. Matthew, I'm starting to get concerned about Gabriel. We haven't heard from him since his phone call saying he did he infiltrated the higher truth by pretending to be one of their followers. I agree. He said he'd be in touch with information he discovered about the cult, but for now we know nothing. Matthew, I just saw Gabriel. What? Where? On Church Street. Gabriel was with a bunch of those higher truth wackos. They were chanting and moaning away in some kind of cultish seance. Gabriel spotted me and signaled. I think he was trying to tell me he left something there for us. In that case, Matthew and I had better check Church Street to see what he left behind. Wait, Matthew, before you leave, I need your help. Carter, Carter's disappeared. Oh, no. Carter's disappeared. Okay, Gloria, you need to tell Matthew me everything. Church Street can wait. Yes, and the more you try to make her see things the way you see things, the more she'll resist. And then you run the risk of never seeing her again. And never seeing the grandchild. Never. Think about it, Josh. Matthew, I'm going out of my mind. Where could Carter be? He's never disappeared on me before. Gloria, take a deep breath and tell us exactly what happened. Well, the judge came to the precinct earlier with her daughter. She said Olive had to make up for her actions against Marcus. So I suggested Olive babysit Carter for the afternoon. But they should have been back ages ago, and Olive isn't answering her phone. The kids said they were going to the Kraken to play board games, so I called the pub. Apparently they left an hour ago. I see, Glor I see. Gloria, I know you're worried, but please try to calm down. Carter's not alone, and I'm sure both kids are fine. Why don't you and Matthew go check out the bar? Even if they're no longer there, you might still find a clue as to their whereabouts. There we go. You know where Carter's gone? Oh, good idea. We know the kids came here to play board games. If we're lucky, they'll have left a useful clue in the box.
Olive's diary. Matthew, you found Olive's diary in that board game box. Now I know that one should never break the sanctity of a teenage girl's journal, but these are desperate circumstances. Let's send it to Ramirez. Nine hours. I'll get the results tomorrow morning. symbol on it. Could Gabriel have left this for us? Let's open the box and find out. Of course, I have collected all stars. Hmm. There's a bunch of papers in that box, Matthew, and each one's got a bizarre message on it. Look at the first one. The Ghibli Scribbler cares not for the sleepy wolf. Sounds like a load of mumbo jumbo to me. You're right, Matthew. The notes may be gibberish, but they don't sound like the usual cult nonsense. Which means this must be what Gabriel left for us. Did the clever dude write us messages in code? Let's get it to Kathy, quick. And I'll see you guys when this is done. Six hours, and I'll see you guys when I get the results tomorrow. For now, see you then. Okay, folks, we've returned. And let's get the results of all his diary. Ramirez, please tell us, please tell me you found something in Olive's diary that can help us locate Carter. <clears throat> well, in between a bunch of song lyrics, questionable poetry, and muttering about boys, I found an entry about taking the ninja hamster child to the inner sanctum of the fallen tree. The ninja hamster is Carter's favorite cartoon character. All it has to be referring to him. But I have no idea what the inner sanctum of the whatchamacallit tree is about. Neither did I, but after but I did some digging and it turns out it's a place in Zerda, that ancient underground city. My kid's been hanging out in the ruins? That can't be safe. Anything could happen to him out there. Best not to jump to conclusions just yet. Here, Matthew, I've drawn you a map to their exact location in Zerda. Thank you, Ramirez. Matthew, let's hope Carter and Olive are still there. 
By the way, Matthew, when you see Olive, you should tell her that the boy who keeps throwing paper airplanes at her doesn't hate her. He just has a big crush on her. Yes, that's ours. I think one of the other like this is the uh <clears throat> According to Ramirez's map, this is a place Olive mentioned in her diary, Matthew. Carter! Olive! Where are you? Hail, Senior Trooper Matthew. Miracle Girl? Yes, it is I. Might you be on the quest of unearth a duo of undersized humans? If you mean two children, then we'll need to speak with you right away, Miracle Girl. Now, Miracle Girl, tell us everything you know about the two children you mentioned. Earlier, I was surveilling the surroundings with my super strength eyes when I perceived two mini earthlings clambering over the ruins down yonder. I was concerned that they might have been in troublesome circumstances, so I ran to save them. But when I explained to the diminutive man-children that, that I would be returning them to the safe bosoms of their families, they escaped. Oh no, so the children aren't here anymore. Where could they have got to now? I have let you down, Senior Trooper Matthew, but perhaps I can redeem myself by telling you I overheard the stubby micro people conversing about the studio of Marcus. Marcus Studio? Could this be where they went next? We better head there right away. Here, Senior Trooper Matthew, take these special energy herbs. They'll give you a superhuman boost to aid you in your momentous quest of a burger. Of course, if you have NCIS on, please disregard that. Emphasis on good. We have no idea what the opportunity is. Certain central evidence is overwhelming. That's not good enough. I need to get stated drawing. I'm not a fan. Practice. 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 Practice.
There we go. Only one, but that's okay. I can't believe it, Matthew. Here I am pulling my hair out, and the kids have been drawing comic book versions of themselves. I have to admit, it's pretty cute, but still. Oh, hi, Mom. Carter, Olive, there you are. Are you all right? Yeah, we've been having so much fun. So you're fine. In that case, we're going to have a serious discussion, young man. What are they going up to? Let's see what they have to say. Mom, I had the most awesome time. Can all of babysit again, please? Carter Olive, what were you thinking? You were supposed to be back at the precinct hours ago. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Hayes. We just got so carried away pretending to be Miracle Girl and chasing bad guys in deserted ruins. And then Carter said he wanted us to draw the next Miracle Girl adventure, starring us. So I took him to Marcus's studio. So what you're saying is that you both went running amok on unsafe ancient ruins and then broke into a dead man's studio just so you could have some fun? Carter, you are going to be grounded for a very long time. And all of rest assured that I'm going to be having a very candid word with your mother. <clears throat> We're really sorry, Mom, but look, we made this for Senior Trooper Matthew. Are we forgiven now? I don't think I'll be wearing that. Now the coded message. <clears throat> Matthew, you were right. Gabriel did write the notes you found on Church Street. Great. How are you able to tell, Kathy? Gabriel and I chat all the time about our favorite codes, which is why I instantly recognize the one he used in his supposedly crazy messages. For instance, Ghibli means vent, scribbler is cult, and so on and so forth. Anyway, according to Gabriel, the cult is after a series of concentric, of concentric circles. You start, in, you start out in the outermost circle, and if you're very devout or very rich, you move progressively closer to the innermost circle, where Stephen Crow awaits. Gabriel's already managed to get to the third level, which means he is now privy to some interesting information, including mention of a big event that's about to go down in the higher truth. But he says he needs more time to get to a level where he can find out more about what this event is actually about. So something big's about to go down. This sounds ominous. I wish you could find out more about what the cult is planning. Oh, you're right, Matthew. Marcus's killer, Haruki Kato, is a member of the Higher Truth. If he's in a higher circle than Gabriel, then he might have more information about the, the big event. We should interrogate him. It's close to out of battery, but we'll see. Not out of battery, but out of film room. <coughs> out of film time, rather. Haruki, we know the higher truth is about to do something big, and you're going to tell us exactly what it is. Oh, yes. Something spectacular is coming our way, Senior Trooper Matthew. But I have no idea what it is. Don't lie to us, Haruki. I'm telling the truth. Only the highest of the high know what is to come. The only thing the rest of us underlings were told was that it's going to be glorious. I can't believe I'll be stuck in this prison cell instead of being a part of it. Haruki, your actions are to blame for you being stuck in this prison cell, and talking of which, we're taking back the money you stole from your victim. Well, Matthew, I guess this explains why Gabriel hasn't been able to find anything. Only Stephen Crow and his close entourage know what the cult's got planned. I guess you can only hope Gabriel gets an answer soon, Matthew. Matthew, I'm still so furious with Carter, and so is his dad, who's going to make sure he stays grounded until he makes up for what he did. 
Officer Hayes, I heard my daughter went AWOL with your son. I cannot apologize enough for her wayward behavior. Rest assured, she'll have learned her lesson by the time I'm done with her. Thank you, Judge Powell. But look, in the end, Carter was alright, and I get the impression Olive meant well and was just trying to entertain him in her own unique way. Olive is a unique handful, that's for sure. I shall be keeping a very close eye on her from now on. Well, that's the way we're children sorted. Now, Matthew, have you got any news of Gabriel? Yes. He left us a message saying the higher truth has something big planned, but we don't know what it is yet. Matthew, I know we're still hoping Gabriel will figure it out, but we'd better be ready to step in at a moment's notice. Whatever the cult's got planned, it won't be good. That is another Thursday. <clears throat> but now, let's find out the sticker packs I got. from this current case. <clears throat> and I'll see you guys on June 21st. See y'all.